Hello and welcome to Linux Leech. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to dual boot Ubuntu and Windows. So let's get started. Okay, the first step you want to take, if you haven't already done so, is to go and get yourself a copy of Ubuntu. Now you can get that over at www.ubuntu.com and then just click on the Get Ubuntu button over here. Go ahead and click on Download and Install. And yes, I'll get the latest version and 32 bits is fine. So we just click Start Download. Save it to the desktop. And while that's downloading, I'll just pause the video and come back when it's done. Okay, so Ubuntu is finished downloading and it's just over here. Now I'm going to show you how to dual boot but both Windows and Ubuntu within a virtual machine. Now all of the steps that I take are identical to the steps that you would take if you were installing it directly onto your computer. The only reason why I'm using a virtual machine is so that I can record the screen and show you how I'm doing it. So I've already got Windows booted up here in a virtual machine. As you can see it's Windows XP. And there's a few steps that you need to take before you actually install Ubuntu and then dual boot. Um, the first step that you need to take is make sure that Windows is installed on your hard drive first. Now this just makes the whole process a lot easier and this is the way that I'm going to show you. So as you can see I've got Windows XP here. Now the second step you want to take is to make sure that you back up your files from Windows um, as in the you know if if the event occurs that something goes wrong um, at least you've got a backup of your work or and your files and folders so back up make sure you do a backup first um, if it's a fresh install you don't need to really do a backup um, because there's nothing to lose. You can always just reinstall Windows again. And the second step that you need to take is you need to defragment your hard drive. Now, basically what this does is it groups all of the bits of data on your hard drive into one continuous block on the hard drive, which makes things easier and it makes well it makes things easy for Ubuntu to actually install itself next to your Windows operating system and it also lessens the risk of you actually writing over any of your files or folders that are already on your hard drive that you've created using Windows so to do that in Windows XP you just go to the start menu here click on all programs go up to accessories system tools and disk defragmenter and what you do is you just click analyze and there we go it's telling me I don't need to defragment this volume but if you did need to defragment it it would then well this would button will become active so you can just de defragment it and it would tell you that this device could do with defragmentation but as this doesn't need to be defragmented and it's all fine I'm going to exit that and just a quick example in Windows 7, which I'm sure is probably the same in Windows Vista if, you've, if you're running that. But you just go over to All Programs, scroll down to the folders, and click on Accessories, and then go to System Tools and Disk Defragmenter. And then you just, the same process again, just analyze the disk and defragment. So once that's all done, you're about ready to install Ubuntu. So what you want to do is if you've got Ubuntu on a CD or you've got it on a USB drive, you want to plug that in now and then just restart your machine and boot from your Linux distro. 
So if it's on a USB key, boot from that. If it's on your on a CD, boot from that. So I'm just going to restart now and pause the video while that restarts and come back when it's booted up into Ubuntu. Okay, so Ubuntu has loaded up now and we've got this install box that's come up so we can either try Ubuntu or install it. Now I'm just going to go ahead and click install. Uh, make sure you check the language here on the left. English is good for me so I'll just click install. Capture. Okay, so it's just done some basic checks to make sure I've got enough hard disk space available, which I do. And it's made sure that my laptop is actually plugged into power because we don't want the battery to die halfway through the installation process. And yes, I'm connected to the internet. Now it checks for this so that you have the option over here to download updates while it's installing and also download like third party software. Um, most of this stuff is like Flash, um, the MP3 codec, and anything that Ubuntu wasn't really allowed to include within their distribution due to licensing laws and stuff. But that's all fine. I'm not going to bother clicking that for this demonstration. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and click continue now. But by all means, um, if you are installing this on your machine, I'd recommend you do click these. So I'm just going to click continue. Okay, so now we've got some options here. We can either install Ubuntu alongside Microsoft Windows XP Professional, which is what I already have installed. We can replace Microsoft Windows XP, which we don't want to do because we want to dual boot, or we can do something else. Now, if you do something else, you get the options to resize partitions yourself, um, create extra partitions so you could have Windows running in one partition, Ubuntu in another and then you could create a third partition for maybe a third operating system or you could create it so that it's a shared drive so you might you know put some music on there so you can share it between Windows and Ubuntu it's anything like that so it's all up to you so I'm gonna do that for now for this demonstration and just click continue and yes this is the virtual drive I want to install it on there's no other options and so Microsoft Windows XP will have 5.7 gigabytes and Ubuntu will have 5.1 which is whatever was left over um, actually this is a new feature which I haven't seen before you can actually just resize the partition here. So 3.2 gigabytes is the absolute minimum that Microsoft Windows needs. And as you can see, the Ubuntu partition expanded to take up all the remaining space. So yeah, you could just drag this and put it wherever you want. I'm just gonna do roughly a 50, 50, there we go, 50, 50 split. And click install now and click continue so now what the installer is doing is it's resizing the partitions and it's going to start formatting the Ubuntu partition using ext4 so while that's happening I'm just going to pause the video because that can take some time and come back when it's done okay so the next step is to tell the installer where you are the reason why it's asking this is basically just to set the system clock to the correct time for you. So I've selected London and which is GMT. Also includes Iceland up here, part of West Africa. And I'm just going to click continue. Okay. Now the next step is to actually make sure that the installer has got the correct keyboard settings for you basically so you can test that down here now I'd recommend holding the shift key and testing out some of the number buttons above your letters to make sure that everything's all the symbols are in the correct place um, for me I always like to test the pipe symbols 
hashes and tildes, make sure the at symbol is where it should be. Everything seems fine. Yeah, everything's in its right place. So that's the correct keyboard type for me. Uh, if it wasn't, you could just kind of run through these and as long as you've got the right language and the correct part of the world, so this is English for the UK, just try out some of the other options if you're, some of the keys are in the wrong places. Once you get the correct one, just click continue. Okay, now we need to enter our name. So I'm going to put in Linux Leech, three E's, and it's already set a username, so we just need to set a password. So let's set one. There we go. And do you want to log in automatically or require my password to log in? I'm going to say require my password. You can also, at this point, encrypt your home folder. Now, your home folder is like my documents in Windows. By clicking this and adding encryption, it will basically add a higher level of security to the place where you will save all of your files. So people will not be able to access your files without your password if they manage to get a hold of any of your files. Um, but I'm just going to leave it unencrypted um, as this is just a test. But yeah, by all means, you can encrypt your home folder. So I'm just going to click continue now. And no, I don't want to import anything from any of these accounts. Um, if you want to import stuff, uh, just click this tick box. Um, I'm not too sure if it actually imports your browser bookmarks. Uh, it may do, but I don't know, maybe one of you could tell me whether it does or not. Um, I generally use Google Chrome and sync everything up line, uh, online, so I'm not too worried about bookmarks and stuff like that. But yeah, by all means, you could click this and see what it does. Um, I'm just going to leave it unclicked and click continue. And there we go, it's now installing the system. So while that works away, I'm just going to pause the video and come back when it's done. Okay, so uh, installation is now complete and we need to restart our computer. So I'm just going to click the restart button now. Um, if you are installing Ubuntu from a CD, you might want to remove that when it, well, it will give you a prompt as it's restarting and tell you to remove that. Um, again, with the USB drive, that's just to stop it from booting back into the live version again, because you don't want that. Now we've actually got it installed on the machine. We want it to go through and boot into something called Grub, which is a bootloader, which will list Ubuntu and Windows. Also, I think Memtest86 in there and a debug mode for Ubuntu. Um, so literally, it's just a case of either picking uh, whether you want to start up Ubuntu or Windows. So there's the prompt on the screen. Uh, please remove your installation media. I've already done that, so just press enter. And we're rebooting now. And there we go, there's Grub. So these are the options. You've got Ubuntu, uh, recovery mode for Ubuntu, memtest86 to test your RAM. Um, and Microsoft Windows XP. So let's just boot into Microsoft Windows, um, but it will definitely now boot into Linux. So let's just go to Windows and just show you. Um, because the Windows operating system may detect that its partition has been resized, so it, there we go. Here's the blue screen um, asking us to check the disk. Um, at this stage, just press any key um, to cancel that and let it go straight through because there's nothing wrong with the disk. There we go, Windows works. And let's just restart this. Uh, 
Let's try Ubuntu now. And let's just log in with our password. So there's my password. And there we go. We've got Ubuntu running now. So, yep, everything's working. Uh, it doesn't usually run this slow. If you've installed it directly onto your machine, uh, it won't run as slow as this. It's actually really, really fast. Um, the reason why it's quite slow, or, or appears to be really slow here, is because I'm running it in a virtual machine and I'm actually running it on quite a slow laptop. Um, so that's why everything looks kind of slowed down. Um, but yeah, there we go. Now dual booting with Ubuntu and Windows. Um, just a quick note, you can actually access your Windows file system from Ubuntu and you can write files to the Windows file system. You can also open files from there, uh, copy them into Ubuntu but it's a little bit different doing that from Windows, trying to access Ubuntu files. Now, there are some programs that enable you to do it, but it's nowhere near as easy, well, it's nowhere near as seamless as actually accessing Windows files from Ubuntu. Um, I can't remember the names of the programs at the moment. Uh, there is one particular one that I've used before, which I thought was pretty good. Um, so I'll put that in the show notes up on, uh, linuxleach.com but there we go everything is all working and yeah dual booting like a dream so that's the end of that tutorial I hope you enjoyed it um, please don't forget to subscribe uh, you can also follow me on Facebook and Twitter, links are on the screen. And as always, the show notes are available over at linuxleach.com. Um, so thanks for watching and goodbye.